Hello and welcome to CX Today. My name's David Dungay. Today I'm joined by Richard Rodwell, Managing Director of Sales and Channels of Asia and Pacific. Welcome to the show, Richard. How are you today? Uh, I'm good, thank you, David. Good morning to you. Um, it's late afternoon here, but you know, uh, still uh, still sunny. Excellent. Well, Rich is coming uh, to us all the way from Singapore today, which is fantastic. Um, we're going to be talking about the financial services sector today and some of the challenges and opportunities in that sector as well. But before we get into that, Richard, can you maybe give us a bit of an introduction to yourself and uh, Hammer? Yeah, sure. Um, as you said, Richard, I, I've been living and working in Asia for the last 25 years. Um, I've kind of been working within sort of the contact center service provider and vendor markets. Um, recently joined Hammer uh, a year ago, uh, and basically uh, the Hammer software platform enables organizations um, to be able to provide uh, outside in view of their customer journeys across their concert center infrastructure. Um, we provide um, functional uh, and regression testing, um, monitoring, uh, and also um, load testing uh, of uh, various vendors um, environments um, for for our customers. Great. So um, we're going to be talking about the financial services sector today. Um, let's start with uh, some of the, the, the big uh, challenges. Where, where do you see the big challenges from, a, from that contact center point of view? Uh, you know, where are they um, in this financial services sector right now? Okay, um, I guess multiple challenges really. Um, it depends on uh, sort of which, which which way you look and where you are in terms of your your overall sort of uh, uh, I guess roadmap in terms of the content center. But um, I'm going to concentrate on kind of three. Uh, I, I I see kind of day in day out with the, the customers I work with uh, within financial services. Um, I think the first one really um, is something which uh, more and more are, are taking note of is uh, being mindful of uh, ineffective channels. Um, we see the pr proliferation of channels uh, over the last number of years uh, with you know, changes and advances in technology. Um, you know, we've got machine learning, uh, visual IVRs. Um, you know, we, we're, we're automating everything end to end. Um, but I, I think the, the key here is that um, you know, when those channels become non-effective or, or they, they, they don't work, um, this tends to lead to poor experience. Um, and I think something which we'll see moving forward is, you know, that we'll have a rationalization of those those channels. Um, and, you know, I think the, the mantra here really is to it's better to have fewer channels that are working than, you know, cater for cater for all. Um, can can, you, can you tell us a bit more about that, Richard? I mean, uh, in terms of ineffective mm. channels, you know, which ones, which sort of channels are ineffective in this in this sector and which which are the prominent channels as well? Um I think, you know, Gartner's done a recent study and I think the, the channel which kept topped out in terms of the financial services industry, which was surprising to me, was, was email. Um, you know, that has its challenges in terms of responsiveness, um, you know, uh, and timeliness. Uh, and, you know, doesn't necessarily deal well with, 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 with complex uh, inquiries or high value inquiries. Um, I, I think, you know, voice uh, it tends to be the default for, for many people. Uh, and I think... It was over sixty percent, you know, said that they would, you know, when 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 in need they will they will you know look to you know call the the organisation's call centre, um, and you know I think it's something which you know voice was touted as going away, and I think most organisations now are seeing an increase in the number of voice calls uh, into the organisation, and you know obviously now being able to start to, to leverage tools which uh, enable to you know deflect uh, into sort of self help. Or, or the use of, you know, as I said, machine learning AI to sort of, you know, to drill down and sort of better sort of direct those calls to, you know, to appropriate agents when, uh, you know, you know, whilst they're whilst they're waiting uh, in the in the service queue. Fantastic. So, um, Richard, you, may, you mentioned a few other sort of areas and challenges. Um, tell tell us about those other those other challenges you're seeing. Yeah, I think the other major challenge, and this comes back down to the channels well, one as well, is, um, you know providing a consistent experience uh, across a lot of channels. I, I think a lot of organizations tend to focus on one or two um, and make those operate super efficiently. So, you know, you, you go, you know, from, uh, from the website to the mobile app and, and you've got the same looks, look and feel. Um, 
Now, I think, you know, developing familiar experiences sort of help with the brand, uh, obviously help with people, who, you know, to, to, to be able to switch in between channels. Um, but I think, you know, generally uh, organizations tend to sort of focus resources and effort on one. Um, and I think, again, uh, to, to drive that need for consistency. Uh, and to, to my first point in looking at ineffective channels, I think we'll see a, you know, a challenge in terms of looking for what works well, um, what has a simple process, a simple journey, um, and which one has good data. And again, data is something which, uh, you know, again, we'll maybe talk about and touch on later, but um, I think that would uh, be my, my second sort of focus. Um, and the third one, um, and this was, you know, a conversation I've had, you know, talking to, uh, to, to a banker, um, you know, and I actually asked him the same question. I said, you know, what is the most challenging aspect uh, in terms of the concert center at the moment? And, and his response was quite, quite interesting. It was, um, re retaining talent um, and, you know, making sure that that talent is trained sufficiently to be able to sort of work with the tools which they, they now have. Um, and, you know, rather than technology replacing, you know, individuals, uh, I think, you know, what what the organizations are realizing now that, you know, the, a lot of IP resides in those individuals. And if, if, you, if you retain them, retrain them, um, give them additional skills and tools, um, you know, they are the front door of the organization a lot of the times. They will handle those high value transactions, those those complaints. You know, when we want to speak to, you know, we want to complain, you know, we don't go to email. We, we call somebody because we want to, we want to, you know, offload. But, you know, I think that's the, that's the key there as well. I think uh, retaining talent is, is, it should be, is, should and will be a critical, critical, critical focus. So um, let, let's talk about where where the sector is in terms of the cloud migration journey. Uh, obviously, we're talking about contact center here. Um, yeah. You know, where, where where is the sector at the moment, and what does hybrid look like for financial services? Yeah, it's interesting. I think we, you know, the last couple of years we had an inflection point with the the adoption of cloud. Um, I think for banking and financial services, you know, that comes with its own challenges. Um, certainly around the sort of you know regulatory uh, and data compliance piece. Um, I think that there's two fault, there's two sides to this. Um, you have to understand that I think clouds are given. Um, you know there are you know operational benefits, efficiencies, and obviously a huge cost benefit of of, of the cloud. Um, but you've also then you know if you look at the banking environment, you've got um, new banks, new digital banks, which are you know which are 100% cloud native. Um, you know they're starting in in, in, a, in, a, in a, a unique position where they're currently not regulated, um, which means they can be extremely agile in terms of what they're doing. Um, and they're not encumbered by obviously the, you know, the sort of the legacy infrastructure, which a lot of the, the, the large traditional banks have. Um, I guess that's where the hybrid piece comes in. Um, you know, the, you know, the inefficiencies or the, the costs of maintaining and running um, and, you know, the, the mainframes and the, the, you know, the data, data pools they have, um, it just don't lend themselves to, you know, to, to migrating to the cloud. Um, I think it's, it's too hard. Um, and obviously that then causes them to be less agile than the, uh, the, the new, the new, the new entrance into the market. Uh, and then, you know, from a, from a data, you know, compliance and security piece, you know, if you, um, they're also constrained by GDPR, you know, and data sovereignty issues. So I think, you know, from a, from a, from a cloud perspective, you know, the banks will, you know, look at extensible um, software. Um, they'll look at the, you know, the, the API integration. They'll be able to plug into to new services uh, and seek, you know, take the value for that. And I think that's one of the key things which drives people to adopt or move to the cloud is, is you, know, you know, having access to those new technologies and new services. Um, but again, as I said, you know, depending on which part of the industry you're in, um, you know, that, that's, it's, it's, you know, hybrid will be the, 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 the way forward in terms of, you know, the traditional, um, the, the, the digital native new banks um, will, you know, move straight to, you know, 100% to, to of the cloud. Uh, and, you know, the interesting thing in terms of the, you know, the delivery of the new banking licenses globally is that you've got a lot of partner, you know, a lot of banks now who are, are partnering with other organizations and sort of creating, you know, the, the, the new digital traditional banks. So, they they have sort of the digital twin. They'll have the traditional bank on one side, and then they'll have the the new um, digital bank on the other. So t tell me, uh, Richard, um, in uh, in terms of Hammer and how you enable this journey, you know what what are you doing to help some of these 
uh, these customers with this with this migration journey, if you like, uh, to the cloud? Yeah, I, I think you know the Hammer tools are uniquely sort of um, disposed to sort of you know help that journey and help that sort of migration um, in terms of assurance. Um, you know, the, the tools which we have allow, you know, the existing content, content center environments to be benchmarked, baselined, uh, and then transcribed, um, uh, automated transcription to the, the new cloud environment. Um, you know, the testing, the functionality regression, QA testing tools which we have, then enable the organizations to be able to test in a, in a sort of a, you know, before going live, that, you know, the, the design uh, and the customer journeys and, you know, from a, you know, from a carrier, from a, you know, from through the, you know, the, the infrastructure through to the agent is, is working as designed. Um, and then post uh, migration, or, you know, to the cloud, we then have the tools then to, you know, monitor to ensure that, you know, um, that, that, that service um, continues in the right direction. And, you know, as, as you know, as, as our development DevOps uh, adapt and change the environments, um, you know, obviously we pre-test those um, before you know going live to you know, reduce the the impacts in terms of outages, downtime, and you know frustration from a customer and customer experience perspective. So, um, Richard, let, let's look at the future now. You know, uh, we are seeing a lot of change, a lot of evolution. Uh, you know, who, mm. who ever thought the financial services sector would be you know quite quite as sexy as it's become in terms of its evolution? Uh, but what, what do you see? Uh, you know, from a contact center point of view. Uh, over the next sort of two to five years for 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 the sector yeah i think um you know customer customer centricity i think is 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 now a, a you know a cornerstone of the, the you know the c level um the executive suite um they realize its importance it's now seen as you know a profit center for the organization historically it was seen as a cost center um you know in terms of driving revenue and dry and you know and driving retention um, it, it's as I said, you know, it's the, it's the front door of the bank, um, you know, virtually and and you know on 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 the phone. So I think you know that's you know that's been sort of cemented in terms of I think the an, the organisation's sort of mindset. Um, you know, 2021, 2020, and 2021, we've seen a sort of you know a significant change or radical change in, in the content centre. Um, you know, with through with COVID. Uh, operations have now removed, you know, removed themselves, um, you know, to to working from home, um, something traditionally the banks would never have done. Um, so I think I think that's 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 here to stay. Um, I think that's going to be a perm permanent transition, um, and we'll see more flexible operations, uh, greater efficiencies, and sort of better use of data through that environment. Um, you know, the, the technologies which are available, you know, can be leveraged to sort of enable sort of that governance from, you know, working from home um, remotely um, and also, you know, the, the tools to enable the agents to sort of, you know, sort of perform at a much higher level. And I think it brings me back to the first point in terms of some of the challenges, um, you know, which the, which the, the industry is seeing in terms of the content center. And I, I talked about, you know, uh, agent retention or staff retention. I, I think in the next two to five years, I think we're going to see a shift in terms of the value put, put on, the high value agents, um, you know, understanding that, you know, I think the agents will, you know, if we train, they, they you know, come sort of mini data scientists, um, you know, supported by or augmented by AI. Um, and, you know, I think from a, you know, they are the, the ones who, you know, who understand the customer journeys better than anybody else. Um, they deal with the customers every day. Uh, and you know, I think they have the greatest insight in terms in terms of what's working, what's efficient, and what's not efficient. Um, which brings me back to the second point about the efficiencies of channels. So, I think you know the biggest change or the, the, the biggest hope I have is is the you know the the value of agents um, going up, investment in you know training or retraining, uh, and making their jobs you know I, I guess a little bit more interesting from a sort of day to day operational piece. You know, they are kind of cor cornered or earmarked into a a certain sort of window and I, I think you know they have an opportunity to really uh, extend their value uh, within the organizations and, and again drive you know more, more revenue and and uh, retain sort of you know retain the customers they, which they do have yeah absolutely I mean it's, it's fantastic to see you know customer experience become a you know sought after uh, career path if, if, if you like um, so Richard I think that's a a great place to end today's discussion. Uh, thank you so much for joining me. Oh, you're very welcome, David. Uh, look forward to our next chat. 
And thank you for watching. You've been watching me, David Dungate, on CX Today. If you like today's discussion, please give us a like and a share on social media. That's it for me. I'll see you next time.